Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Thursday, April 27th edition of the Basement Academy. I must confess, I'm kind of enjoying uh, this set of reflections, reflecting on a few of my favorite psalms. The challenge, as I've mentioned, is actually selecting only one a day. But I've chosen one today that really is one of my favorites, and it goes way back even before I was praying the Psalms. This stretches back to, again, my college days uh, when I was in Charlottesville. So I want to read for you Psalm 27, and then I want to share uh, with you why this is one of my favorite Psalms. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me at his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen. Mm. Love this psalm. I've, I've chosen a couple verses to, to lift up and reflect on, but there's probably a, a half a dozen more. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What great words. We live in such a fearful, anxious time, and so this psalm is so good. It, it just, it's like speaking to ourselves, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. It's, it's almost like self-talk, reminding ourselves of, of, of what is true. David, of course, faced all kinds of enemies and armies that, that came after him. And so <clears throat> we can understand that we don't have that experience, but we do have challenges. And so perhaps you'd want to memorize these opening couple of verses about the Lord being your light and salvation. There's no reason to be afraid, Christian. There's no reason to be afraid. But the first verse I want to lift up is verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. This verse became meaningful to me in my college days. Again, I've, I've shared about that a number of times, even yesterday, but with that, that song. <clears throat> um, the first church I ever joined as a professing Christian was Trinity Presbyterian Church in Charlottesville, Virginia. I decided, I didn't think I was going to live there forever, but 
my heart had been moved uh, to, to embrace Christ. I had begun to attend Trinity and was there for a couple of years, um, watched a building project take place. We started in a middle school, moved to a high school. Eventually, we got our own building, first building I ever contributed to with a few shekels. Students don't have much money, right? Uh, and I've been a part of churches that have been built, I guess, four times now, um, five. Um, <laughs> um, and so it seems to be part of the, the, the path uh, that God had for me. They offered a membership class. It seemed right to stand and make a profession of faith. And so went through the class, did the studies, met with the elders. And then when we were introduced, we were encouraged to present a verse, bring a verse with us that we thought somehow reflected our faith journey at that moment. And Psalm 27 verse 4 is what God laid on my heart. At 22 years old, you don't, you're not thinking in terms of a life verse. I'd only been a Christian a couple of years and I didn't have any sense. I wasn't planning on going to the ministry. I didn't have that sense of call yet at all. But what I did have was experiences of worship, of being in God's house with God's people, both at Trinity and then our Fellowship of Christian Athletes group. Um, I think I've shared, you know, I played the guitar and so had opportunity to lead worship. And so there was something about this, you know, this conversion that I went through, uh, moving from the sins of my youth that I was engaged in and being brought free from that. And this new life and this verse seemed to express that one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I don't want to just be there part of my life. <laughs> there was this sense of, I want this faith, this relationship with Christ, what I'm about, this new thing that has come to me. I want this for the rest of my life. Now, I think God's brought about some fulfillment of this because I, I dwell in the house of the Lord. I mean, my vocation is to be in the church. And, and little did I know at, at that time. But to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, to contemplate God. I had an early sense of that. I don't, this is, I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying God impressed upon me through music, through prayer, through God's word the strong sense of how beautiful God is, um, how great he is, how, how loving and forgiving and trustworthy God is. And so um, this verse every month on the 27th of the month, when I pray Psalm 27, it brings me back to those early days, recalls my first love. Uh, for the Lord. So I've always, always um, enjoyed this psalm for that reason. And then um, verse 8, my heart says of you, seek his face. And so it kind of has that same theme, right? My heart says, so again, kind of the self-talk, seek God's face, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Somewhere in those early years, I don't recall who the speaker was. I don't recall. I think it was an FCA talk. Might have been at Trinity, a sermon. But early on, I heard somebody talk about the difference between seeking God's face and seeking God's hand. And we're called primarily to seek the face of God. His hand will work on our behalf. But the distinction was this, to seek God's face is to desire to know God for who God is, to know the being of God, the person of God, the character of God. Who is this God that says he loves us? Who is this God who says he forgives us? Who is this God who has created us? As opposed to seeking the hand of God, hey God, can you do something for me? To see the, the hand of God, the face of God represents the presence of God. The hand of God represents the activity of God. He stretches out his hand and delivers and saves. And, and gladly that the hand of God is stretched out. 
But maybe another way of thinking about it is this. Your kid goes off to college. Uh, they don't return your text. They don't return your calls. Um, they don't come home much. But you hear from them when they need money. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Hey, just checking in. How you guys doing? Da, 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 da. Hey, running a little short. Could you, could you Venmo me some money? You know, could you put some money in my account? Of course we'll do that. And of course we're appreciative of any contact with our, our children. But there's a difference from that call than the call or the text that says, Hey, just thinking of you. How you doing these days? Just had a class, talked about blah, blah, blah. Wanted to share that with you. Those are two very different phone calls. Those, those very different communications. And so the idea of seeking God's face, God, I, it's good to be with you. I want to sit in your presence. I want to meditate on your word. I want to sing that song. I want to spend some time in prayer. I want to be with you. That's seeking God's face as opposed to, you know, don't go to church much, don't read the Bible much, but hey, I'm in a pinch. Hey, God, can you help me out? Okay, so that's that 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 speaker many many years ago talked about the dif the difference between seeking God's face and seeking God's hand. My heart says of you, seek His face, and so this psalm has just drawn this language that ties into verse four, right? About gazing upon the beauty of the Lord. There's that same idea. So anyway, love this psalm for that language. Let me encourage you to renew your seeking of his face, to sit in God's presence, to sit quietly, to go and contemplate, go out and just look at the beauty in creation. And, and don't have your cell phone out, just, just to sit there and contemplate God. And so let me encourage you to do that. Then there's a puzzling little verse, verse 10, though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Now, my many of you had a chance to know my parents, Tom and Jackie Meeks um, of blessed memory. Again, uh, Monday was the two-year anniversary of my mother's death. My father died at the end of 2012 and, and so thankful that the Greenwich family knew mom and dad. Um, <clears throat> they did never, they never forsook me. So, so I want to be clear about that. But as in any parent-child relationship, there are seasons, right? And, um, and there were times when I didn't perceive that my parents understood me um, always. And some of it wrapped around the faith. They, they were appreciative of this faith. They were delighted. Um, I think my faith and my journey encouraged them in their faith and their journey. Um, we had, I grew up in kind of a Christmas and Easter home. Um, Christian home for sure, but maybe not as engaged. And and thanks be to God, they they wonderfully engaged uh, the the many churches, both in Fairfax down in Crisfield and then here in uh, at Greenwich uh, over many years. But there were seasons, um, so I never felt forsaken of my parents. But somewhere along the way, it occurred to me my parents are going to die. Not not just you know in the months before their deaths. But somewhere along the way, long before, I, I realized my parents are not always going to be there. And so kind of in a, in, a, in a metaphoric way or a figurative way, I understood that my parents are going to leave me at some point. But the Lord will never leave me. And so, um, so that portion of the psalm, I pray with gratitude for my father and mother. And so many of us, Maybe our parents are, are deceased. If, if your parents are still living, then pick up, your, pick up the phone and call your mother, right? <laughs> um, express appreciation to your father and mother. If, if you are estranged in some way, seek to reconcile with them. Um, let us never forsake our father and mother. And then, of course, it becomes an opportunity to pray for children. I never want to forsake my children, I will never want to be a father and mother who, whose kids feel like I can't talk to mom or dad. Mom and dad don't understand me. And so, 
So it's a verse that prompts me into family prayers and a reflection that the Lord will always be there. And then finally, um, the last couple of verses, I'm still confident of this. And again, David, you know, faced with armies and other uh, challenges and people pursuing his demise. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So whatever David was facing that prompted this psalm, he had a confidence at the end of the day. God is with him. God's going to get him out of this thing, going to deliver him. And then the last verse, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So he repeats this, this phrase to wait for the Lord. There is a patience required in life. There's a patience required in marriage, in child raising, in family life, in vocational life. There's a patience required in all things. It is so hard to wait. There's something in us that wants what we want when we want it. And if we don't get it, sometimes, as people of faith, we question, God, why aren't you giving it to me? You know, God has purposes. God has seasons. There's a time and a season for everything, every activity under heaven. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And so part of maturing, the, the, the larger part of maturing in life and in faith is learning to wait. And so this psalm bids me, it instructs me, wait for the Lord. The situation may be challenging. You may be facing enemies. You may have trouble. Again, those are the, the language and some of the themes of this psalm. Keep gazing upon the Lord, his beauty. Seek him in his temple. Seek his face. Seek his presence, not just his hand. Wait for the Lord. He'll deliver you. He'll protect you. He'll guide you. He'll get you out of that thing. He'll lead you to the next stage. So be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. So whatever you're in, whatever thing you're waiting for, you're waiting for something. Every one of us is waiting for something. Take heart. God knows what you're waiting for. God knows the burden Maybe the anguish, the disappointment, the longing, you know, all that bundles into waiting. Wait for the Lord. He's with you now. He's going ahead of you. He'll meet you there. He'll be there in that moment when the thing you're waiting for comes to fruition. Uh, those who wait for the Lord or on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. Isaiah 40, verse 31. And so this psalm, the, the, bidding, the, the bidding us to wait on the Lord, connects us to that other wonderful passage. As we wait on the Lord, something happens. God is deepening our faith, our hope, our love. When we wait, when a patience forms, and, and, and that patience enables us to endure much in life, right? Many of our challenges result from impatience. I just can't wait. I've got to get on with it. And so let me invite you to, to pray this psalm, to make this psalm one of your favorites uh, for all these verses, but certainly for this final verse. So anyway, it, it's been a joy to talk about this for a few minutes. Uh, and these are some of the reasons why Psalm 27 is one of my favorite psalms. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the ways in which your word accompanies us through life. And as I speak of this psalm now, it, I call back to those early days when you met me and called me to yourself down at college. And thank you for Trinity Presbyterian and the pastors there who preach. Thank you for the speakers at FCA that helped to nurture faith, hope, and love that taught me to seek your face as the psalmist bids. And so I pray for those listening here in the Basement Academy that we might 
draw close to you in new and fresh ways. Thank you for David's heart and the way it's on display in so many ways. And Lord, teach us to wait. Teach us to be strong, to take heart this day, whatever it is we're waiting for, and to find our strength, our hope uh, in you. Hear us as we pray in the name of our risen Lord who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, may you seek his face and may you know his beauty and power and strength this day and forevermore. Amen.